Welcome everyone back to Better Health. I am here virtually sitting with Jerrica Hortel, who is not only an amazing friend to me, but she's also the founder of Unpopular Moms on Instagram. She's a great thought leader in the space of postpartum, motherhood, pregnancy, and she's also an amazing wife and mother of now three little girls. So welcome to the show, Jerrica. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So thanks for bringing me on as your friend and just ready to get the conversation started. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing conversation, everybody. Jerrica is so sweet, and she also has some amazing and very strong opinions, and that's why I love her. And so we're going to just dive right in with the first question, which is what everyone would expect. You know, give us context on where you grew up, where you live now, and then also a little bit of about your background. Sure. Um, so I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, a lot of my, most of my family still lives here and, um, I've lived here my whole entire life. And, um, it just recently we've been looking to live elsewhere. Uh, maybe we'll get into that a little bit, um, <laughs> later, <laughs> um, in regards to the topic we're going to talk about. But, uh, so yeah, I have been here in Phoenix and we still currently are, um, and so I went to school here, um, grade school through college. I became a nurse. Um, I got a bachelor's degree in nursing, but I am currently a stay-at-home mom of three girls now. So I am not working as a nurse currently since actually my first baby, which she's turning four in wow. a week. Oh, man. <laughs> which is crazy. But um, I really feel like, even though I'm not working as a nurse, I'm still continually learning. And mm -hmm. we're going to get into that um, on this episode, which I'm excited about. But mm -hmm. so I'm a nurse, um, a mom of three girls. Uh, my youngest baby, she just is almost two months. She just turned seven wow. weeks. <laughs> so we're in the thick of newborn life. And so, yeah, that's kind of why um, I wanted to talk about intentionally living and just the, on the topic of seeking wisdom because mm. no matter where you are in your life I feel like um, this topic will apply to you if mm. even if you're not a mom my perspective is going to be uh, heavily motherhood <laughs> motherhood perspective uh, but that doesn't mean that this topic is not going to be relatable to mm -hmm. you um, so stick with me, stick with us. <laughs> there will be something Definitely. for, I think any listener here. So for sure. So even if you are a mother, great, because you're going to get, grab a lot from this. And like Jerrica said, if you aren't a mother, you're still going to grab a lot because of the fact that it's really going to, um, cause you to reflect and think about, you know, what you do believe. And, you know, maybe you're, you want to dissect, you know, into the beliefs that you have right now and why you believe it. So then, you know, maybe later on down the road, if you do have kids or even just different views in general, but how to dissect that and have wisdom to discern. So, Absolutely. so before we dive into that piece, what was your childhood like in regards to health and what you believe right now? So was it similar to your views or was it very different? Tell us a little bit, a bit, little bit about that. Yeah. Oh my gosh so different. But <laughs> I've always been on the path of getting to where I am now, but I did not grow up with, um, I would say like the same values and influences that of the things that I value currently. So I, um, I enjoy working out between pregnancies <laughs> not so much while I'm pregnant. So I haven't gotten back into that quite yet, but um, as I'm still newly postpartum, but yeah, I enjoy, um, fitness and that was never something I grew up watching my parents do. Um, I enjoy learning about all different types of foods and how I can be the healthiest and how I can acquire the healthiest foods. Um, whether it's, you know, raw foods, whole food diet, and mm -hmm. then also getting into the non GMO organic. And I think April, that's where we first really yes. hit it off. <laughs> we have a lot of the same um, health Definitely. passions. <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah, so my childhood just, health was like ac being active was always a part of my childhood. My parents, we were always out and going and doing things and um, camping and just being active and 
Um, my mom even still today is an avid hiker. So like the influences were there, you know, the, the seeds were planted, so to say, but it mm. definitely is blooming now in my adult life. Um, so cool. it's, it's grown a lot from mm. those, um, seeds that were planted when I was young. So now I'm just full blown <laughs> into health and healthy foods and fitness and, um, <laughs> finding my own way. (laughs) I love that so much. And exactly like you said, we totally bonded immediately when we found that we had very similar views and values. And from there, it's just grown ever since. And so diving into a little bit of the meat now, I have a question for you in regards to your Instagram name. So you're called Unpopular Moms. Tell us a little bit about how you decided to take that title and why. Yes. Okay. So I had a different name prior. Uh, It was recently changed, I think like in the last six months. Um, So I just realized my intention in that space is to encourage moms to live a life true to them, live a motherhood true to them, Mm -hmm. despite what societal norms are. Um, and not being afraid to seek the wisdom to turn away from things that are seen as normal if that's not Mm -hmm. what's working for them. And so a lot of the ways I'm doing that in my own life make me feel isolated Hmm. and like lonely, like I'm doing it differently than anybody that I know in my life currently. Um, or maybe I only have one other friend that I can talk to about that because <laughs> only she's the only one doing it the way I'm doing it. Mm. So I just felt like the perfect word was like, I feel unpopular. Um, I feel like the unpopular mom, the one going against the grain mm. and the one not just going with the flow of societal norms and expectations, but I am seeking the wisdom in ways that will help me grow to know that that path is true to me and not just the path that society is telling me to go. Mm. So I just thought it was catchy and fun and like it was a perfect explanation of like how I felt. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I, I think that title is very accurate and I thought that was very catchy as well because of the fact that it's not necessarily the norm of what you're choosing to do, you know, whatever choice you're doing with your kids, raising your kids, or, you know, the food you put on the table, it might not necessarily be the norm, but it's what you find best because your ultimate job, and I know you, is to protect your kids, to make sure that they are healthy and that they are raised in the best way possible. And so I, I'm one of the unpopular moms. Once I become a mom, I'm not a mom right now. So if anyone's like, wait a minute, is this like a secret announcement? (laughs) It's not a secret announcement, but when I do become a mom, (laughs) I'll probably be one of the unpopular moms with you, Jerrica. (laughs) I'm so excited for that day. (laughs) So, so what were, what are some of the categories that you find yourself just differing from the norm? If you're, if you would like to talk about that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We don't have to go into super detail on any specific one unless you would like to. But yeah, gosh, I think about the ways I'm doing things differently quite often. Um, Mm -hmm. makes, you know, talking to other moms more relatable. But I would say, um, first and foremost, the food that I'm feeding my children. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are pretty strict on only feeding them organic foods. Mm -hmm. Um, not processed foods, not fast food. So that's one thing I feel like differs from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, another one is in the realm of health, uh, vaccinations, the way Mm -hmm. we go about proactively, um, trying to keep our kids healthy versus reactively, Mm. Um, and I am heavily into looking into things and Mm -hmm. researching things. Um, so while research doesn't need to provide us with all the answers or like sway us into decisions, it's, you know, our decisions shouldn't be solely based on 
research we find, um, it, it does have a big impact on the decisions I make. Mm-hmm. So that's what's guided us in, t- in the direction of really being anti-vax. Mm. <laughs> Can I yes. label myself that without <laughs> anybody shutting this podcast off? I'm not shutting it down. I'm okay with it. <laughs> and I'm not saying this with judgment to people mm-hmm. who do vaccinate. Exactly. My whole goal mm-hmm. with anything I put out is, and when I talk to friends and family, is just know why you're doing what you're doing. Don't mm-hmm. just do it because your doctor says you know, what is the reason that you want to do that for your child or choose not to do that for your child? So I'm definitely in the vaccine realm. We differ and, um, we haven't like really formally started to homeschool, but we definitely know we want to keep our girls out of girls because I, I have all three girls <laughs> so I'm sticking to the girl mom Kirk's a little bit I'm, outnumbered <laughs> yeah. is um all about it right now <laughs> but homeschooling we're gonna homeschool we're gonna keep our girls out of the public school system because it's just not going in the direction we're going to educate our girls in a way that we f- feel comfortable with mm-hmm. uh, so the only way to not do that, to not bring them into that system, to not have them receive that education is to do it yourself. So mm-hmm. those are a few. I, I don't know if any come to your mind that I didn't <laughs> name, but I think those are the biggies for sure. I actually totally forgot about the homeschooling one. And um, once you brought it up, totally resonate with that as well. Like when Caleb and I, even before we got married, we agreed that yes, we are homeschooling our kids. I was a public teacher and I loved the position that I had. I loved being able to teach the kids. Um, And one thing that I realized is that the curriculum is not what I want my future kids to learn. And so it was very clear to me. And then with Caleb being homeschooled and coming to me being like, Hey, this is what I feel strongly about. I was like, great, let's do it. You know, that's exactly where I'm at as well, because, you know, we can pour into our kids in a much more personalized way as well. It's not even necessarily, you know, what we may not agree with, um, but personalize it as well, because we have a smaller group of kids and you may be a mom out there listening that has 10 kids and, you know, that's a little less small, but it's still, Mm -hmm. you're able to still personalize the education that they receive because you're able to go based off their strengths and you're able to go based off their passions and then intertwine that with it where, as a public school teacher, I I tried my best to do that. And at the same time, you know, when you have sometimes over 20 kids, it's not as easy um, as much as I really wanted to do it. You know, I did it to a certain degree. And so with your own kids, you can bring them into real world situations. You can travel with them for social studies. And one thing that I love that you guys are doing or have done in the past is Mm -hmm. you guys like took a really long road trip and you went to some amazing states and that's so cool for your girls to experience. Yes, we're excited to incorporate homeschool into our life and not so much revolve our life around their schooling, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. And I feel like the only way yeah. that is possible is through homeschool. And I'm totally. so excited your that your journey from classroom teacher mm-hmm to homeschool mom is going to be so incredible and full of testimony because it's sort of the uh parallel to Mm. my experience as a labor and delivery nurse over to home birth oh that how did I leave that out (sighs) this is so so cool we're having epiphany left and right (laughs) right so passionate about birth. That's another Mm. thing that adds to my unpopularness is Mm -hmm. I'm a home birth mom and I came all the way from learning and receiving education, um, through being a labor and delivery nurse in the hospital setting to having home births with my girls, uh, Mm -hmm. with the second two, my second two, my youngest two. So, but so So yeah, it just brings me back to the topic at hand of, Mm -hmm seeking wisdom in areas that you're passionate about or that Mm -hmm. you are wanting to grow in. And that's most likely April, how you came 
to decide you want to homeschool your kids. Mm -hmm. You learned and saw how the public school system was and then decided that you want something different Mm -hmm. than that for your own family. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how I learned, grew, and turned a different way in my experience as a labor and delivery nurse and decided Mm -hmm. to have home births. So, man, we uh, really, really on (laughs) We that. do. I, I love that. It's, that is really cool. Um, so for the moms out there listening, actually just anyone in general, listening, listening, how would you advise them to go about, you know, diving deeper and, you know, having more discernment and, you know, educating their self. And this goes for, you know, no matter what view you have, you know, diving deeper into making sure that the views you have are appropriate to what you believe. And how would you, I guess, how, how would you tell someone to start with that? Yeah. I always first and foremost, direct my friends to their faith. I Mm. am a Christian and I have faith in Jesus Christ. And I always start with prayer and Mm. that can help me, um, focus in on things that God is trying to show me in directions he wants me to grow in. So, or if it's a direction I want to grow in and I'm not quite (laughs) seeing it bloom in my life, I can just ask God about that. Mm -hmm. Um, He's who I turn to first and foremost. And so turn to in, just turn inside yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe you're not a believer. Um, You should always just consider what, what's the little nudge that you're having Mm -hmm. or what's an area of your life that you're unhappy with that to me is a great place to start. Or, or if you mm-hmm. see somebody around you doing something different and you're interested, you know, get to know that person more, ask them questions or, you know, just go mm-hmm. towards those little nudges, those uncomfortable areas, or just an area that you know you're passionate about and start with one that can help you not be so overwhelmed but it Mm -hmm. will help you get started. The worst thing you can do is this was a quote I heard and I, I'm not quoting it directly, but Mm -hmm. when you learn something profound, you shouldn't carry on in your life Mm -hmm. as if you never heard it. Don't carry on the same way. Apply what you learned to your life. And that may not happen immediately, but work towards doing so. Um, Mm -hmm. so to me taking your time doing that, because especially for a lot of things, um, that may be big life changes, or Mm -hmm. if you're changing something in your motherhood journey, it can feel heavy. So you don't want to go about it the wrong way. Oh, there's one of my girls. Oh, I love it. This is real, right? Everyone. <laughs> Raw footage. <laughs> yes, you sure can. I'll, I'll be out in a little bit. <laughs> We're in a home office, it. you know. <laughs> it's the best. Um, yeah. So if go about it as simply as possible and just take action. Mm. I think um, intentional living is a huge word with you and Caleb, and I yes. just love it because it applies here as well. Um, Mm -hmm. be intentional, take action, start learning, ask questions and ask the person who is where you want to be or who, um, has been where you are. And if that person isn't like a real life mentor, maybe Mm -hmm. that, maybe you found that person on social media, you can still find your tribe and, and a good place to start from. So Mm-hmm. I hope that answered your question. 100%. It's it's so good. And the whole intentional living is really analyzing every decision that you make every moment of your life. You know, so why are you choosing to eat that? Um, why are you, you know, doing this one action without even knowing the reason why? <laughs> so it's like, okay, I keep doing this repetitive pattern that I'm not very happy about but I've never actually take, taken the moment to realize why I'm doing it. And then once you realize why you're doing it, does that align with your values or does that align with what you believe? And if it doesn't, 
then taking action to change that. And it goes back to the quote you said of, you know, when you notice something in your life or when you notice that there's an area that you want to work on or you learn something new that you really love and then you don't take action on it, why? Like, what's the point to to all of it then, you know, it, you could learn all you want. You could read all you want, but if you don't even share it with anybody, what's the point to that? Maybe, maybe it does fulfill you to just know a whole bunch of information without sharing it. And that's, that's great. You know, if that makes you happy, that's great. But you know, there's so much more that we can do. And one thing that I do and being a woman of faith as well is I pray, you know, that God would search me he would search me internally and then show me what areas maybe I've never even realized are an issue or something that I need to work in. And then through that, asking him to lead me. And so it really allows you to reflect, you know, realizing these areas are not what I love and I didn't even realize it. And so reflecting on that, why am I doing this? And then praying through it, you know, trusting that God can help you change that area and then working towards that. And then nothing is ever going to be easy. Nothing's ever going to come easy, but we also have to like, we have to put in that work. You know, you can't just, you know, realize that I want to be fit or I want to lose weight and work out one day, realize it's a lot of work and then sit there not doing the work and expecting to get the result. And, you know, it's just, it's just common sense, common sense. If you really think about that. Yes. I have thought and said that so many times that (laughs) you have to put in the work. Nobody Mm. is going to do it for you. Nobody is going to come over and push you to do the research on that topic or Mm -hmm. see what it would take to accomplish that goal Mm. or you know, no one's going to come knock on your door and ask you (laughs) to research vaccines. Like you have to put in the work in order Mm -hmm. to, um, see those changes Mm -hmm. realize in your life. And it brings you back to like, well, why should I do that? I'm Mm -hmm. so busy. You know, if this is, this is, I'm just relating this to (laughs) anybody. Like we're all so busy Mm -hmm. all the time. Does life ever really slow down? I feel like not. <laughs> There's I'm never a waiting. moment. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we're still waiting here. <laughs> so we're always so busy. So why should I spend extra energy thinking about these things actively? Mm-hmm. Because it takes energy to go against the grain and to realize things yes. in your life that you want to change and to change them. Mm-hmm. But I honestly feel like once I have really become intentional and thought um, mm. actively, proactively about these types of things, how I want my life to change and to actually go change it mm. um, has made me happier mm. and made me feel like I'm living my life and being the mother that I want to be. And mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. letting go of prior expectations that I had and just Mm. stepping into my true self and praying along the way makes me feel even more aligned, Mm -hmm. more aligned with the life that God Mm -hmm. wants me to live. So you're losing out on, in my opinion, those amazing things, those things that you can feel fulfilled by Mm -hmm. if you are not incorporating this into your life. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, you know, if you're someone that is going along with the grain and you're doing it because, you know, it it seems easiest, or there are people that are higher up that are telling you to do something, but yet you feel slightly uneasy or uncomfortable going about it. That's a really good sign that, Hey, take a little bit of that extra time, extra work, or, you know, take the time to ask the questions to really decide for yourself then, because, you know, you could take all the opinions you want, but really finding, you know, what do you believe and really doing the deep dive into that is so important, especially if you are feeling uneasy about a certain decision that you have to make that you're going along with. 
that's a, that's a really big cue to maybe just stop and it's okay. And just really look into it and pray about it or, you know, ask questions, talk to other people and, you know, get both sides, gather the information you need to then make your own decision. Yes, absolutely. Love it. Is, is there any big takeaways that you have Jerrica for listeners as we begin to wrap things up? Yes. Uh, okay. I would say kind of just right along what we were just talking about. Um, I, if, if you hear anything, hear this, that there is so much outward stimulus and um, Mm. pressure and pushing and nudging in, in, in any direction, nudging you to go in any direction on Mm -hmm. any topic um, that you may feel like you want to change in your life. But like you said, do the deep dive first into yourself and get rid of any prior expectations you had for yourself on this area of your life. I'll give you an example of how I've used this in my life. With being a nurse and then mm-hmm. quitting my job, I was getting, um, I was, I'll just call it noise, external noise. Mm-hmm. I was hearing noise, seeing things about how moms should be working or um, they shouldn't lose out on applying this degree that they had worked so hard for. Uh, And then in my own family, I was even hearing like, and friends, I was hearing from them like, oh, you're going to quit. And even beyond that, I'm looking now almost um, letting my nursing license expire. And a lot of people around me are just surprised by the fact that I would let that go. And so Mm. how I'm applying um, this in my life, letting those expectations go and um, letting go of limiting beliefs. So Mm. find out what those are and apply them to your situation and let them go. So uh, it was a limiting belief for me to think that I could not be fulfilled as Mm. only being a mother, being a stay-at-home mom and running my household. I recently heard somebody, um, Candace Owens, she might be a reason someone will shut me off now too, um, (laughs) But she said, take pride in being the CEO of your household. So I really grabbed mm-hmm. onto that and I am letting go of the expectations that I had previously of wanting to be a nurse. And I'm mm-hmm. now fully living and fully vested and fully fulfilled by the path that um, God has put me on being a mom and, mm-hmm. and staying at home being a mom. Hi, Sage. <laughs> And I'm a mom right now. <laughs> Full Sage girls. up. All right, Sage, you're yeah. you're next. <laughs> Look at this, Anna. Oh, she's Hi, a beautiful Sage. Anna. <laughs> my two-year-old. Hi, Sage. Hi, April. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, you go outside with Dada. <laughs> Bye, Sage. <laughs> so yeah, it. that's just something I hope everybody can take away today. Discover your limiting beliefs, discover Mm. expectations you have from everybody else and from the outside world, from society that could be holding you back from living the life that Mm. you truly want to live. Because once Mm -hmm. you can do that, you'll just see things go flying out the door that you (laughs) used to be important to you. And now you have time for so many Mm. other things that are more aligned with your values. Yeah. Things will just fall in the place. So, Mm -hmm. so good. That was an amazing takeaway. So thank you, Jerrica. Oh, you're welcome. (laughs) So now to the hardest part, like I tell everybody is the rapid fire questions. The first one I have for you, and I know you kind of went through some practice ones, but I have a few (laughs) that I'm throwing at you that are a little different now. Um, so the first one I have for you is what books are you reading right now? Okay. So I have not picked up a book since having a baby. (laughs) Uh, I really thrive on my morning time. Like when I can Mm. carve out an hour in the morning to do things for myself and reading is part of that. The last book I left off in that I will pick back up as soon as I get to that point where I can (laughs) wake up an hour before my baby um, is called The Fourth Trimester. 
Uh, yes. It's, it's a motherhood postpartum book, just empowering, inspiring moms uh, through and supporting them through their fourth trimester, which is postpartum, the first 12 weeks postpartum. Mm. Uh, and I also am divulging into a daily devotional mm. uh, through the Daily Grace Co. You can look them up. They Ooh, have what? some really great okay. devotional books. Okay. So I'm finally incorporating that um, just recently. So I'm starting with there that and then I'll dive back into the fourth trimester. <laughs> I am going to have to remember that daily grace co that'll be in the show notes for anyone interested in it as well, along with the fourth trimester. I have that book. I haven't read it yet, but once, you know, <laughs> kids are a little more in the picture, I will definitely be picking it up. Yes. The next question I have for you is what is your favorite food? Um, <clears throat> Okay, this is okay. I love good food, but I'm mm-hmm. also super easy to please. So I I just love burgers and mm-hmm. these days it usually consists of grass-fed beef, all the toppings, mm-hmm. just something fresh, warm, cheese. Yes. And there was a recipe I've been I've made a few times. This is reminding me now that I need to make it again with this like bacon sauce that you put on the burger uh, with your slices of bacon. I definitely need to make that again. So yes, oh. good burger, full of flavor. I love it. That sounds amazing. Extra, like, okay. So how do you like your burger before I move on to the next question? Medium a rare? Little bit, medium. A little bit of pink. Yes. It's like what, medium or? Medium. Yeah. Probably medium. Yeah. I'm a medium rare fan but mm, okay yeah a little less pink <laughs> <laughs> all right and the next question which we've talked a little bit about is what's your definition of intentional living Ooh, just living a life true to yourself mm. and and living that proactively always thinking ahead to what um, what you're doing and why and how you can change things if if it's not aligning with your current desires and values and mm-hmm. just not sitting back and just thinking about it, but actually doing it yeah. is, is the take home, take home away, run. Yeah, <laughs> home get run. it home, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. get it home message. Yes. Home get it home take. peace. You have to actually <laughs> take action on it. Yes. Okay. Action is, is totally key to see mm-hmm. growth, to see change. Action is where it happens. Yes. And the last question, what is your favorite travel destination or a dream destination that you have? Oh, man. <laughs> you know, we are so, I love traveling, but we, um, me and my husband, we have not gone very many places in the last seven years of our marriage. It's pretty really crazy. That's something we want to change. You know, I would just say where we're headed right this summer, Montana, mm. um, my husband's a big hunter. We love the outdoors mm-hmm. and that's kind of where I want to explore. That's not very specific, but just <laughs> anywhere in Montana outdoors mm-hmm. and enjoying the summer air there yeah. and the nature, the lakes, the rivers mm-hmm. and, um, the pines, the forest. So the, the peaceful, mm-hmm. peaceful nature. And then the smell of everything, the smell of the pines, Yes. All the things like the total sensory overload that is in a good way. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's then almost, yeah. in, in another way, sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> um, it's a full sensory experience, but it's also so calming and grounding. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. just what I love about it. Yes. 100%. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of visualizing that right now, wishing I was there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and last, how can listeners connect with you? Uh, well, really, the only thing active right now is my Instagram <laughs> page, uh, just at Unpopular Moms. I don't even really get a lot of DMs in there, so feel free to message me, and I will be the one responding. So right now, that's the best way. Amazing. I love mm-hmm. it. So that'll be in the show notes at Unpopular Moms, if you would like to follow some valuable information, real life motherhood going on right now with the crying. We almost made it. Jerica. Thank you for having me. And um, this has been really fun. I didn't know where this conversation would go, but 
I, really I loved it as well. Today. I thought it went really smoothly. And I just love, I love being able to see your girls, no matter if they're crying or not. <laughs> all three interrupted today. So it's all good. <laughs> you all got the, the experience of Jerrica in real life. <laughs> For sure. Well, thank you, Jerrica. And have an amazing rest of your day. 